Rock Hudson. We know the face, we've seen the movies, we know he was gay. But unlike his heterosexual counterparts like Elizabeth Taylor, whose love and husbands we've all heard about, most of us can't even name Rock Hudson's greatest love. And why? Because we didn't talk about stuff like that. But we do now, so let's talk. So lately YouTube has been restricting a lot of my content citing community guidelines. <laughs> my channel apparently is just a little too hot for YouTube. So that's why a subscription from you makes a huge difference to me. So if you can just take a moment right now, if you've been watching my videos, you like what you see, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I've also noticed that even with creators that I enjoy watching, if I don't have the notification bell on, YouTube will eventually stop suggesting their videos to me for basically no real reason. So if you don't have the notifications on, make sure you do that so that you do not miss a thing. Hollywood, California, 1962. A young, handsome movie extra and struggling actor named Lee Garlington is trying to make a name for himself. And it's not easy. It seems everyone is looking for their big break these days. And on top of that, Lee has a secret. He's gay. There's tons of homosexuals in high power positions, but no one talks about it. And rumors remain just that, rumors. But Lee's a clever guy who comes up with a clever plan. He would use his homosexuality to his benefit. See, he knows that one of Hollywood's biggest stars is gay. And if he can get close to him, maybe there'll be common ground. Something to build a connection on. Something to build a network from. Something that could lead to work or something. Strolling through the Universal lot, Lee casually asks around for the location of the cottage belonging to Rock Hudson. After a few I'm not sure's and I don't know's, he finally gets his answer. He grabs a copy of Variety magazine and casually waits outside the cottage for the star to emerge. At midday, the unrelenting Californian sun is burning the pavement and the sound of busy propsmen fills the air. How long should he wait? How long could he wait before looking suspicious? His stomach grumbles, reminding him it's lunchtime. Finally, the door to the cottage swings open and a tall, handsome man emerges, squinting in the sun. Lee's heart starts to race. This is it, he thinks. This is my shot. He lowers the magazine and tries to lock eyes with the handsome man. Rock seems deep in thought and walks right by Lee, but so close that he can smell his cologne. Lee watches him walk away, burrowing into the back of Rock's head with his eyes. Come on, turn around. Then, mid-stride, Rock stops in his tracks and turns his head towards Lee. The world stops. Everything in slow motion. Even the birds are silent. He can feel his heart beating loudly in his chest. Lee Garlington and Rock Hudson lock eyes for the very first time. And then, like coming out of a trance and breaking the spell, Rock turns and walks away. Lee stands there trying to grasp the moment, a mix of emotions running through his body. Excitement at seeing such a big star in the flesh, frustration that the moment was so fleeting, sadness at the realization that his plan came to nothing, confusion as to what to do next. With his head hanging low and his hands in his pockets, Lee heads out of the universal gates and home to his boyfriend. The seasons change and a year goes by, so slow and yet so quick. So much rejection, so much disappointment, failed auditions and a failed relationship. Lee is now single when he gets the call that would change his life forever. It takes him a minute to realize who's on the other end of the line. It's one of Rock Hudson's closest friends. They don't waste time with idle chit chat, but cut straight to the chase. Would you like to meet Rock Hudson? was the question that rang through Lee's ears like an echo chamber. The rest of the conversation is a blur, but he remembers agreeing to meet the man he tried to connect with a year earlier. As he hangs up the phone, Lee wonders, why now? Does he know that I'm single? Did he have me checked out? Of course, in those days, stars of Rock Hudson's caliber could and would do just that. Have someone checked out, vetted. A week later and already running late, Lee is throwing clothes on the bed. What do you wear to see someone like Rock Hudson? Downstairs, he turns out the light, locks up, and gets in the car. The directions are clear. 
destination Beverly Crest Drive in Beverly Hills. Driving down the quiet palm tree lined streets of the uber chic neighborhood, Lee starts to get nervous, his palms clammy on the wheel. And then there it is, Rock Hudson's house. Lee pulls into the driveway and turns off the engine, giving himself just enough time to take a few deep breaths before getting out of the car. Even the front door is imposing. What could this night bring, he wonders. Lee gives three tentative knocks on the door, which, after only a minute, swings open, as if Rock was anxiously waiting on the other side for his guest to arrive. And suddenly, they're face to face. After all this time, Rock gives Lee a bright smile, his eyes twinkling, and asks him to come inside. Lee crosses the threshold of the house for the first time, and yet somehow, it feels like something he's done his whole life. Rock motions for Lee to have a seat on the sofa and offers him something to drink. A beer would be great. Am I shaking? Why am I so nervous? This is what you wanted. Rock is cordial and real and the perfect host. And although the energy between them is palpable, the air between them full of electricity, nothing physical happens the first night. On the way out, standing in the doorway, the two men agree to meet again. And on the drive home, the events of the night play through Lee's mind like a movie picture on a loop. In the months that come, a routine emerges. The two men are like a gay Romeo and Juliet. They can't stand to be apart, even though the world says they shouldn't be together. After Lee finishes work, he drives to the house on Beverly Crest Drive to spend the night with his tall, famous lover. But Beverly Hills is a tightly knit neighborhood where everybody knows everybody's business. So at 6.30 a.m., Lee tiptoes to the Chevy Nova parked in the driveway and lets it coast down the street without turning the engine on so as to not alert any nosy neighbors. Lee only wants to be with Rock and Rock is obsessed with Lee, but in public, a heartbreaking charade must continue where the men are just friends. Rock is consistently voted one of the most loved movie stars of the time, and that comes with a price. For the housewife in Kansas, Rock is a ladies' man. For those in Hollywood, Rock was Lee's man. If only Rock and I could walk on the red carpet together was the thought that Lee was having as he stepped out of the limo and outstretched his arm to his date for the movie premiere. A beautiful, talented female friend of his. As she elegantly exits the car, Lee turns to look ahead of him on the red carpet to see his love rock arm in arm with another beautiful woman and surrounded by paparazzi. A mix of feelings, love for rock, admiration for his ability to push through the charade and hatred for the world that wouldn't allow them to be together. When the two men do have downtime, they love to take road trips together, county fairs in the south, packing up a small suitcase and hitting the open road was as free as the couple were ever gonna get. Speeding down the Pacific Coast Highway, the warm air rushing in through the windows, holding hands out of view and talking about everything and nothing. Lee takes mental snapshots of these times. He's happier, they're happier than they've ever been and maybe ever will be. Small moments, lounging on the sofa, rocking his chinos and moccasins, watching TV like any other couple in America. On Saturday morning in the bathroom, Rock showing Lee the proper way to shave. I know how to shave my face, but he's being so sweet. You see, if you take the razor at an angle down your face, it cuts better. A smile, a gentle kiss on the cheek. Coffee's ready. In Rock's bedside table drawer are pictures of Lee, some with his shirt off, some on the beach, but not one photo of the two men together. It was talent scout Henry Wilson who discovered Rock and gave him his namesake that forbade any photos of Lee and Rock together. After all, rumors could remain rumors as long as there was no photographic evidence that they were spending time together. And so, one especially warm evening while Rock Hudson sips chocolate martinis with his best friend and confidant, Elizabeth Taylor, he complains about the restraints of not being able to be himself with Lee in Los Angeles. And Liz, ever the support that Rock so desperately needs, suggests a trip to the quiet beach town of Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. No one will know you there. You can be whoever you want to be. And it was heaven. The sun twinkling on the Pacific waves, crashing against the Mexican beach, the two men holding hands, kicking up sand and laughing about life. But one rule remains, no pictures together. So they take turns taking pictures of each other 
lovingly looking through the lens and taking snapshots, both physical and mental, to carry with them forever. But the whirlwind romance lasts only three years. Three years of kisses, three years of whispering to each other I love yous, three years of falling asleep in each other's arms. The reasons they break up are simple but heartbreaking. Stress of living under a microscope, of people's expectations of how things ought to be, of sneaking around, and of Lee's need for a strong father figure. He's a wonderful, sensitive, loving man, a gentle giant, but someone else's giant, maybe. After a long emotional talk, Lee exits the house in Beverly Hills for the last time, gets in the car, and drives out of Rock's life. The years fly by, as the years tend to do, and when Lee hears about Rock's death, he's devastated. Why didn't we keep in touch? Curious, Lee picks up Rock's biography and devours every word. But his heart stops when he reads the part where Rock confesses that his mother and Lee were the only two people he ever loved, and calling Lee his true love. The tears well up in his eyes and fall down his wrinkled skin. How many times did Rock want to call but talked himself out of it? Why didn't he tell me how he really felt? And now it's too late. Overcome with emotion, Lee closes the book, kisses the cover photo of Rock, and places the biography next to his bed and next to his heart. Thank you for watching. And for a deeper dive, why not join the growing number of people who have signed up for my newsletter? It's absolutely free and full of goodies and deals that I don't share anywhere else. Just go to patrickmorano.com. And supporting my channel these days is more important than ever for me since I'm getting demonetized and restricted ad revenue. So if you want to do that, like my newest patrons, Tim and William, please do so. They get perks like monthly video chats with me, advanced access to episodes, behind the scenes content, and more. And I'll see you in the next video. Mwah.